Hello everyone, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more and exciting videos just like this one. Hello everyone, this is Matt Hoots with Sawhorse and you know that I'm a general contractor. However, every now and then I need to get my hands dirty and do some electrical and some other things. So I'm going to unpack my electrical toolbox here and show you which tools that I use um, for my construction projects and also primarily for my DIY projects in my house. I've got quite a few things that I'm trying to tune up, fix, and over the years I've built up a nice arsenal of electrical tools and I want to show you which ones I are going to make it back into my toolbox and also the ones that I use the most and I'll tell you which ones and, and how to get them yourself. Now again, I'm going to unpack this. Not everything is going to make the cut to go back in into the toolbox. I've noticed that over the years that I've just left a lot of tools in here from various projects. I'm gonna take those back out, put them back into storage either on my left and right or into my general toolbox and keep only things that I need for electrical. And the reason I like to keep my electrical toolbox different than my uh, either painting toolbox or my general toolbox, because if I'm working on a specific task, all I have to do is come to the garage, grab that toolbox and pretty much I'll have 99% of the things that I need tool-wise in there. I've also kept a box of just parts and pieces, general parts and pieces that I can use to do repairs around the house. All right, let's get started and let's unpack this toolbox. Before we repack this toolbox, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get more exciting videos just like this one. And you can see my plumbing tool list, my general construction tool list, my painting tool list. Again, there's going to be lots more exciting videos coming up. All right, you see that I've got a mess here and towards the end I just decided to dump everything out because there's quite a few things in here that don't even belong in my electrical toolbox. So the first thing, let's talk about the toolbox itself. I've got a nice husky, uh, you just carry tote right here and um, for the most part it's worked. I don't, I don't feel that it's too small or too large and it's actually held up for several years for exactly what I need for it. But as you can see, um, before I was using headlamps, I tied a flashlight to my toolbox. It seemed like a good idea at the time until the battery died and I couldn't take it off to charge the battery. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this flashlight from the toolbox. And for most projects that I've been using on or at my house I've been using a headlamp so I can see the exact thing that I'm working on and also I can focus it to where my hands are going. So well we'll start with a utility knife. Utility knife is always good to have as part of a electrical toolbox and I probably keep one of these in each of my toolboxes. Um, why do you need a utility knife? Well it's either for packaging if you're if you're uh, cutting a wire and stripping the casing off the wire this is uh, this is not for stripping a wire, but this is for taking the casing so you can actually strip the wire itself. So I'm going to go and put that back into the toolbox. Next thing I have is something that every electrician, every demo guy, every carpenter should have. And this tests the current that is going through it. So you push this button, you hold it up to a wire. If it doesn't make a noise, then you're safe. It, if it does make a noise, that means you've got a hot wire and you need to make sure that you disconnect the power before doing demolition in that area. It's also good if you're wiring something up and if you know if the wire is hot or not to see if it actually works. On the other end, and I like this one because it can test a voltage meter, meter so it can actually test to see if the water, wire is hot. But also if you're wiring or rewiring an outlet, um, you can plug this in and it's got a bunch of indicators here to let you know if it's an open neutral, open ground, hot ground. And basically if, it, if, it, um, if it's correct, the last one's gonna light up. So you plug it in, hopefully the last one lights up and that's what you need that's what you need to go with. The next thing I want to talk about, I've got a Klein tool and I um, lost one of these on a job site and I didn't realize how much I missed it because this is, uh, I'm not sure how many you want, it's, it's got to be at least a, um, uh, an 8-in-1 Klein tool, but basically every any combination that you need for a driver for electrical is going to be in this. Um, I think I got this one at Home Depot and this has been very handy. Probably use this on at least half of the projects that I work with. So speaking of screwdrivers, this is probably the most handy invention out there. 
instead of having to twist, twist, twist to put the, the screws and bits back on, I've got a Phillips head and also on the inside I've got a flat head. So if you're putting an outlet in or putting the case on, all you have to do is grab one end, twist with the other end, and basically when, in less than half the time you've, you're able to put the screws in and drive in at the same time. So this is very handy. And again, this is by Klein Tools. Um, another tool, that, and I'm putting the ones in that I use the most often first, and then we're going to see which ones don't make the cut back into the toolbox. Um, another one, and this is from Commercial Electric, but I'm sure other manufacturers make this. Um, a nice set of pliers, so we've got the needle nose pliers in the front. I can cut the wire um, right below the ne needle nose pliers, so this make um, good snips. And below that, which is very handy that some of my other pliers don't have, I can actually strip the wire. So I'd, I would say at least um, if not 100% of the time, at least 90% of the time if I'm doing electrical, these come in very handy. Helps bend the wire if I'm installing an outlet or if I'm installing a switch. But also if I need to strip the wire and make a pigtail, I've got from 10 gauge to 20 gauge. Um, and it's got the, lets, it, let, lets me know if, if, you know which ones I need to do for solid and stranded wire. So this is very helpful and I'm going to use this probably most of the time. Now when I'm not using that, I'm using a set of Lyman's pliers and these are nice if I'm twisting or braiding wires. Basically grab the ends, twist them together, and you can get a, get a nice um, tight braid before you stick the wire nuts on. Uh, these also are very handy for snipping the wires um, and you have a lot more leverage than you do with these. So if you find that you can't cut the wire or whatever you're trying to cut with these, the Lyman's pliers are much more useful for that. Um, I've got a set of general um, pliers, but you know what? This is not going to make the cut because I find that for the most part, I'm going to be able to do most of the things that I do over there. So this is going to go into my general fund. Um, again, another set of needle nose pliers. These do come in handy. Um, these are a little bit smaller than the other ones. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back into the box because these were designed for electrical use. A flashlight. Hey, while this is nice to have, um, I'm going to put this into my general box. I do like this one. This is from Olight, um, even though I do like it because it does have the micro USB charger on the back. Um, I'm not going to put it in my electrical kit because, again, anything that I'm doing with electrical, I'm going to be wearing the headlamp so I can see what I'm working on. So that does not make the cut. Uh, any, any type of wire cutters or copper cutters, um, strippers, I'm going to go put back into this box because, again, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to be doing any type of electrical unless I have this box with me. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back into the box, even though I might not use them as often as the other tools. I've got a Phillips head screwdriver. And again, since I had my 8-in-1 or 12-in-1, however many combinations or permutations we can find for that one, I'm going to leave this in my general. We've got electrical tape. All the electrical tape goes back into the box even if there's just a little bit on it because you never know you might need it for something so all the electrical tape goes back into the box. I've got some more needle nose pliers again these were not necessarily designed for electrical so I'm going to put them back into my general toolbox or into one of the drawers. I've got some more wire cutters and again these are just for cutting wire. Um, looks like you can strip some wire with these. Um, probably only use these once or twice in the past because they're probably buried at the bottom of this box but I'm going to put these back into it. What I like about these wire cutters, it looks like it can hook around the wire so when you're squeezing on it, as soon as you start squeezing on it, it grabs the wire and it can cut the wire so it doesn't get loose on you. Again, this one is very similar to this, just a little bit heavier duty. So these serve the same function. These can grab the wire and cut the wires for you. Some long needle nose pliers. I have no idea how these got um, into the mix, probably use them on a project where I was doing some other things and then just ended up back into my electrical toolbox. So I'm going to put these off to the side over here. And again, another one of these um, just five in one sockets. Don't really need this one anymore. I do use this. I've got my little shorty. I've got, it's a, um, it, it's a, it's a, sh it's a short flathead screwdriver. I have used this um, in some, in some instances. And I've got tons of these in my, my general toolbox already, so I'm going to leave this one in here because I have used it for um, electrical. Again, another tool that I don't need in my electrical. 
Right here, I've got my ideal ratchet, ratchet um, and this is basically for, and I think this goes into another toolkit that I had, but this is for making Cat5 cables, uh, wiring up some low voltage. And since low voltage um, is electrical, I try to keep my high voltage and low voltage tools in the same box. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in here. Got some dirt on this, but I've got another one of my um, Klein um, voltmeter. So this is a, a great way from testing low voltage all the way to high voltage. I've used this a few times and it's been very handy. Um, so let's get back into my Klein coaxial toolkit that I have here. Um, ended up rewiring all the cables in my basement, so I bought this. Um, the kit that I, that I bought from them has something that can strip the coax and also something that would bind the ends to the cables once we were ready. So I'm going to go ahead and put those back into here. Um, the thing is I was dealing with some existing coax cables, so I ended up buying this, this other tool. It looks like this one's made by Klein as well, and I promise you I'm not sponsored by Klein. This just happens to be, they make good tools, and I happen to have them in my toolbox. And that's what's also sold at my local hardware stores, which happens to be Home Depot. This right here is so you can determine which cable is going to which other end. So I had a, a couple instances where I had the cables that were buried. I didn't know which ones were live or what was wrong with it. So you plug this end to one end of the cable, you plug this end to the other end of the cable, and this sends a signal through the cable, a very, very weak signal. So if, if this end actually gets the signal, this makes a noise. That way you know if the cable has a continuous run or not. And what happened in, in, in my case, I ran a cable and it had a kink in it. Instead of gently pulling the kink out, pulled too hard, I broke the, the, the wire inside the cable. So I had to run a whole new wire, but this saved me a lot of time in identifying that that was truly the issue and it wasn't something else. It wasn't the connection or one of the ends. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all these back in there. Um, let's talk about some of the tools that I bought that were, you know, looked useful, but weren't necessarily as, as useful as they looked on the package. Uh, I'm gonna try this one again. This was a handy mark that I bought. And this was for electrical. This probably belongs in my drywall toolkit, to be honest with you, but it is for electrical. So when you put the electrical box in, and if you haven't installed the outlet in, this slides into the outlet. So if you're marking the drywall, if you have to do a quick patch, this lets you know all the different corners that you need to cut. You cut these out, put it over. It's a perfect fit over the, the, the drywall toolbox instead of trying to push it in place and using a roto zip or other tools to, to cut it out. So I'm going to leave this in here. But the, again, this might make it back into my drywall toolkit instead. Um, I'm not really seeing a lot of other things down here that are going to make it back into it. Again, this goes with my um, voltage meter. Uh, a lot of these screws are going to just go back into my screw drawer. The, none of these are um, electrical specific. And there's a bunch of trash down here. I've got a broken tester, so I'm probably going to... Um, I'll see if it actually works. I'll plug it in. Even though I've lost this, this last cover over here, if this light does work, I'm going to go ahead and keep this because this is handy to have on job sites um, in case I left the other one on another job site. Some more pliers. We've already got plenty of pliers in there, so that's not going to make the kit. And um, I've got some straps. I'm going to throw these back in there. A Sharpie is always handy um, for marking wires when you're running rough wires and you don't know what the other end is. Marking both sides with a Sharpie um, is very useful. And it looks like that's about it. The rest of the stuff is trash, pins, um, or just garbage that needs to be thrown away. So. That's what's in my toolkit. Now there are other things that you can put in yours, but I feel like everything that is in here, or at least 90% of the tools that are in here are ones that whenever I'm doing electrical, I actually do use. And I can't think of any others uh, besides the ones that are in here and if that I would actually add to the toolkit because I've gone through re rewiring most of my basement and about 10 years of electrical punch out on our general construction job sites. And I found that these tools get us through the job site. Just because I all these tools made the cut for my toolkit doesn't mean that these are the necessarily the best ones out there. Again, I'm not an electrician. I am a general contractor and a handyman DIY guy in my own personal house. So if there are tools that you find that are good for everyday carry or everyday use, and you're an electrician or a little bit more advanced than I am with electrical, I'd love to see what you think in the comment section. Thanks for watching this video, and if you like this one, we've got another video just like this one coming up on our DIY section on our channel. And also, do not forget to subscribe because we count on people just like you to help support 
our channel as a small business and so we can create more videos just like this one. See you next time.